Senator Hume. Thank you, Acting Deputy President. I rise today to speak on the Corporations Amendment Crowdsource Funding for Proprietary Companies Bill. And it is an absolute joy and a privilege to speak on this bill in the chamber today, particularly after my colleague from across the chamber, Senator Cameron, Senator Bagpipe's happy chap, quite clearly. Uh, it, this is know, a bill that he, in fact, se no, supports. No, se Senator, Senator, Senator Hume, um, that is not. That's not appropriate language um, to be used in the Senate chamber, and I'd ask you to withdraw that and refer to senators by their correct title. Thank you, Acting Deputy President. My apologies. Senator Cameron is always good-natured, is always cheerful. This is a bill that the opposition actually supports, and he was that miserable. You know, giving his uh, not quite 20 minutes to the chamber today, crowdsource funding for proprietary companies bill. This is a man, I might add, who, uh, quite clearly, quite clearly, he didn't actually understand the content of the bill. He did pepper it with, you know, a, a you know, little, little bit of, you know, spewing forth of bile throughout uh, reading the contents of. Of, uh, of his speech today in the chamber. Uh, quite clearly, Senator Cameron is a man who has invested in nothing in his life, has taken no risks in investment in his life, other than potentially investing in whatever might give him a comfortable retirement. Mr Acting Deputy President, I would like to touch on four, four areas today. Why? I support this bill very enthusiastically. The specific provisions of the legislation and what the bill in fact does, the broader contribution of the crowdfund of crowdfunding generally to Australia's economic prosperity, and how this builds on the work that the coalition is doing to support small businesses and start-ups in Australia. So, why would the government support this particular bill? Let me say that in Australia we are not simply a nation of dreamers, we are a nation of doers. And uh, to provide my colleagues some context to this, in June 2016, there were 2.2 million businesses trading across Australia. The number of new startups in the, in the year prior to that was um, up 1.2 per cent. Indeed, the coalition's innovation agenda ushered in promise of easier access to startups, um, for startups to crowdsource funding, um, equity funding, funding for incubator support programs, and also tax incentives for investors. And Prime Minister Morrison, who has uh, said that those in this country willing to have a go should get a go and that that is fairness, Prime Minister Morrison has been very clear that this bill is, forms part of the coalition's determination to deliver on that promise. This is a step uh, in step with many other advanced economies that have embraced crowdsource equity funding in support of business growth. From the UK's Financial Conduct Authority that provides compelling and renowned alternatives for funding business development to Singapore uh, that has recently made similar changes to, on its, of its own to ensure a more streamlined and simplified framework for businesses to start up and to invest. So the legislation that we are in fact discussing today is very much of uh, some of the, uh, the metal behind that vision uh, that the government has set out in that initial, uh, initial work on the innovation agenda. So while the title of this bill doesn't sound particularly exciting, the impact that it will have on thousands of businesses, thousands of individuals that aspire to bring ideas to the market, who will have more access to money to do so, who will have their chance to have a go, make their dreams come true, now that is truly exciting. So that's, what, that's why good government matters. It's about making the changes that genuinely count, that really count, rather than just whining and complaining all the time, finding something to be miserable about. And extending that good framework for crowdsource funding is a key example of that. I, you, I, I honestly think that Senator Cameron has spent way too much time in opposition. I think five years of opposition is beginning to take its toll. He's got nothing good to say anymore, and even about a genuinely good piece of legislation. Crowdsource funding enables startups and small to medium-sized businesses to raise money from the public to finance their businesses. And these can be very small amounts from a broad range of investors to quite a large number of investors. Companies um, that have less than $25 million in assets and annual revenue can raise up to $5 million a year using crowdsource funding. Now, when I became a senator, um, I stood in this chamber and I said that in 20 years, I want to be able to look my children in the eye and assure them that my generation did all that it could to create a prosperous and productive Australia. 
uh, Acting Deputy President, if we get this right, those born after 1990, currently aged 26 and under, who will not only lead the entrepreneurial charge, but they will now be equipped to do so. And legislation like this will help ensure that future generations lead the charge for growth and business development in this country, the like of which we have never known. So let's talk very briefly about what this bill actually does. Um, the, uh, under the existing law, companies must use crowdsource funding or a CSF platform, uh, usually online, to, uh, to make their investment off offer. And this is run by an intermediary that must have a, an Australian financial services licence authorising them to provide crowdsource funding services. The intermediary acts as a gatekeeper between the company and investors and checks the company and the investment information that the company provides before the offer is placed on the website. So, for example, the uh, crowdsource funding website must have a warning for investors about the risks of investing through crowdsource funding, as well as copies of the offer documents for each investment, which has important information about the business making the offer. The website must also have an online portal that potential investors can use to ask the company and the intermediary questions about the investment. So the bill we're discussing in the chamber today makes the, an essential legislative amendment to the Corporations Act by extending the legislative framework for crowdsource equity funding beyond public companies to proprietary companies as well. It builds on an already uh, established crowdsource funding equity framework for public companies, which uh, commences at the end of this month. So what is crowdsource funding? I hear you ask, Acting Deputy President. Mm. Well, crowdsource funding, equity funding, is a relatively new and innovative concept. It enables businesses to source capital from a very broad range of investors online. And typically, each investor will contribute a small amount of money in return for an equity stake in the business. The coalition consulted at length on this extension of the policy to proprietary companies, and those submissions received as part of this consultation expressed widespread support to extend the crowdsource equity funding model and framework to proprietary companies. Extending the framework to proprietary companies builds on the existing framework for public companies and, as such, will incorporate many of those existing features that I mentioned earlier of the public company framework, such as the obligations for intermediaries and the process of making uh, crowdsource funding offers. Now, in Australia, uh, private companies or, or proprietary companies are limited to 50 non-employee shareholders. So, to ensure that proprietary companies can effectively access the framework without breaching that 50 um, non-executive, non-employee shareholder proprietary company cap, investors who acquire shares through crowdfunding um, offers will not be counted in that shareholder cap. Subsequent transfers by crowdfunding investors who on-sell their shares uh, will also be exempt if the company is not listed on the financial market. So crowdfunding proprietary companies will be exempt from takeover provisions, also consistent with the, the light-touch regulatory approach of the equity crowdfunding regime. The takeover rules are, in fact, very complex and would be very, very costly for proprietary companies using crowdsource funding to understand and to comply with. So recognising that this is, in fact, an extension is a new approach to the proprietary company framework in Australia that these companies will face. Um, sorry, these companies will face some additional obligations, such as uh, a minimum of two directors, uh, financial reporting in accordance with reporting standards, and also restrictions on related party transactions. And this demonstrates the robust nature of the safeguards contained in the legislation before the chamber today. And, uh, and while still embracing new start-up and business ventures and allowing them to grow and to expand and, hopefully, to thrive. In addition, it is important to know that proprietary companies um, that raise $3 million or more will also be required to maintain audited financial statements. To ensure consistency with the proprietary company framework, the bill also increases the audit threshold for eligible public companies from $1 million to $3 million. And finally, the bill uh, removes the temporary new public uh, company concessions in the Corporations Amendment, the Crowdsource Funding Act of 2017. These concessions will be grandfathered for companies that register as a public company status before, um, sorry, prior to the bill taking effect after, after royal assent. So these changes will not blur the lines between public and proprietary companies. It is perhaps 
worth noting, uh, Acting Deputy President, that 98 per cent of Australian registered companies are in fact proprietary companies, and start-ups in particular adopt this structure. An inflexible approach would result in a much higher regulatory burden that deters business growth. So I'd like to touch on the contribution of, crowds of crowdfunding, crowdsource funding to the economy. Um, I've already outlined the specific impact of this legislation and the changes in detail. As mentioned, crowdsource funding enables startups and small to medium-sized businesses to, to raise money um, directly from the public to finance their businesses and can be sourced from a variety of investors. And we're see seeing significant good news stories already in Australia from the impact of crowdsource funding techniques. Indeed, since equity crowdfunding framework was uh, originally passed in March last year, Australia has in fact seen its first uh, crowdsource funded power retailer company <coughs> launched, a company called DC Power Co. And uh, this, uh, it's hoped that this particular company will tap into almost two million solar households and potentially six million by the year 20. This solar energy disruptor uh, has claimed a world record for the most people ever around the world participating in a crowdfunded equity raising, with over 17,625 retail investors taking part. It's a brilliant example, Acting Deputy President, of the contribution that, uh, that crowdsource funding can make to Australia's economic prosperity. And it intends, and this particular company tends to seek investment from up to 95,000 people in order to raise a total of $4.75 million. So it's not the future of raising capital, it's in fact the reality that we're already facing of how capital is raised. And this is what this bill specifically acknowledges. So when we look at the, the bigger picture, crowdfunding offers a foundation for startups that automatically creates. More, more job opportunities, which are, of course, essential to a growing economy. Moreover, generating a buzz around a forthcoming product or a service often leads to more sales and more revenue generated. <coughs> so crowdsource funding can, in fact, be a marketing tool as well as an equity-raising tool. The coalition thinks that this is a good thing, and the coalition is delivering on legislation to make this possible. Business thinks this is a good thing. Entrepreneurs think this is a good thing. Innovators think this is a good thing. So the coalition thinks this is a good thing too. There are other ways that small businesses and startups are being supported by the coalition. And let me turn now to talk about some of those other ways that small businesses are being supported. The government's support of small business and startups does not start and end with crowdsource funding, although it does make it easier. It's only one part of the puzzle. There are a range of initiatives already in place that make entrepreneurship and small business easier in Australia. Let me talk first about the Entrepreneurs Program, which helped businesses increase productivity and competitiveness, linking them with funds and access to a national network of private sector advisors and facilitators across Australia. This is the government's flagship initiative for business competitiveness and productivity. It provides a range of grants, um, offering ventures up to 50 per cent of expenditure on a particular project, and applicants can seek free expert advice on their ventures to address their knowledge gap. Another initiative is the CSIRO Kickstart program, which is driving innovation by supporting local startups. It focuses on the research and testing of, uh, of companies um, and, uh, that have a new idea, a novel product or services. So it gives companies that are in that startup phase, that small to medium enterprise access phase, oh, so access to the CSIRO's research expertise and also its capabilities and helps them grow and develop their business. So eligible companies have to be re re registered in Australia. Um, for GST, have an annual turnover of 1.5 million or less in the current and the past two previous um, financial years, and have been registered as a company for less than three years. They receive a dollar matched fun funding to research, develop, or test a product or a process with, uh, with commercial potential. 
Another one of my personal favourites is the Biomedical Translation Fund, which supports startups operating in the area of health and wellbeing. It was established originally as part of the coalition's national innovation and science agenda, and it's armed with over $250 million of Commonwealth capital, but also an additional $250 million from private sector capital. So, so far, 10 investments have been made through the BTF, the Biomedical Translation Fund, including $7.5 million in MedStart tech startup company called Global Kinetics in just April this year. Now, Global Kinetics is an extraordinary company. It creates watches that measure uh, movements, uh, whether they be tremors or dyskinesia and other movement disorder symptoms, and they collect data on the frequency and severity of those movements, which can change the lives of, uh, of patients with, with Parkinson's disease. We also have the R&D tax incentive to help all businesses stay ahead of the curve through a tax offset and encourage innovation even in the smallest of ventures. And from July 1, 2016, companies with an annual turnover of, $20 million, uh, of under $20 million can claim a 43.5 per cent refundable tax offset against R&D expenditure that amounts to $100 million or less. All other eligible companies can claim a 38.5 per cent non-refundable tax offset. For R&D expenditure under $20,000, companies can only make a claim if it was undertaken with a research service provider or a cooperative centre. So there are a number of other programs run by the government that can provide incentives, whether they be financial or otherwise, to, uh, to help young companies get off the ground, things like the Venture Capital Partnerships Program uh, Australia, um, which attracts foreign investors to Australia and boosts the local venture capital market with tax uh, benefits. To be eligible for that one, funds must register as a venture capital uh, partnership uh, under the Venture Capital Act of 2002 and make commercial, uh, non-property, uh, non-construction or non-infrastructure investments and hold them for at least 12 months. So those investments must be in ventures where the total assets are valued at under 250 million, 50 per cent of the assets are located in Australia, and 50 per cent of the employees must also be in Australia. Tax benefits for VCLPs include a flow-through taxation treatment, uh, exemption from capital gains tax on the share of profits made by the partnership, and the ability to claim uh, carried interest on the capital account instead of revenue. Uh, another program is the Austrade Landing Pad. Uh, the Austrade Landing Pad in initiative aims to give Australian startups a, a, a leg up in the global market by immersing them in one of five world class innovation hubs. So, startups accepted into landing pads are in Singapore, Berlin, Shanghai, Tel Aviv, or San Francisco. They benefit from an on the ground presence plus access to networks, talent, mentors and investors. To be eligible, startups must demonstrate a strong vision, scalability, traction and differentiation, and explain how 90 days in a landing pad in one of those five markets could help their venture. Austrade provides workspace and an accelerator and free services, but participants have to fund their own travel, their own accommodation, living costs, visas and insurance, etc. So Austrade may also provide funding potentially for global startups in Australia through export market development grants. Um, Acting Deputy President, without doubt, this government, the Morrison Coalition government, is doing significant work to put small business and startup development at the core of its innovation agenda. It requires constant work. It's not something about which any government <coughs> could afford to be complacent. As credit, in particular, becomes tighter, uh, it is so important, at which, because that impacts the viability of some businesses, it is so important, it is absolutely critical that we are constantly, as a government, looking for better ways of how we can help incentivise development and embrace the future. And crowdsource funding goes such a long way towards that. It's not the only solution, and I think I've made that clear today. There are other ways to help and encourage young businesses, startups, small medium enterprises, people with a good idea, people with a dream. How do we help them 
get a chance, get their first foot in the door, get a leg up. How do we help their businesses grow and thrive and survive? Crowdsource funding is part of the, of the puzzle. The Crowdsource Funding Act strives to balance supporting investment, maintaining, um, reducing compliance costs, maintaining appropriate investor protections uh, but for proprietary companies as well as for public companies. I believe, as does the coalition, the coalition believes that this legislation will go a long way to ensuring that Australia embraces crowdsource funding, the concept of crowdsource funding and the opportunities that come with it as a viable route uh, uh, by which small businesses and start-ups can establish themselves, can grow, can expand, can uh, flourish and hopefully employ more Australians. Because when it comes down to it, that's what it's all about. That's why we want businesses to grow. That's why jobs and growth are so important to the coalition. Jobs aren't an end of themselves. They're a means to allow, they're a means to allow society to grow and to, and to flourish, to survive and to thrive. Thank you, Senator Hughes.